Let us continue with uh, a discussion of another very influential thinker uh, from early Renaissance, uh, who, as I mentioned in my notes, is considered to be in many ways the father figure or a reference point for the school of quote unquote realism in international relations, as we'll see later. <coughs> and not it's not by chance that he is considered to be that together with Thucydides because you will see commonalities between the two thinkers. So Machiavelli, Niccolò Machiavelli, um, was born in 1469, so about 200 years after uh, Thomas Aquinas, and yet it would be hard to find more different thinkers in a way. But as you see, there are deeper similarities. Uh, I posted on Canvas, and I invite you to read three textbook sections, just note that uh, the order in which you should actually read them is first textbook section 1, textbook section 3, and te textbook section uh, 2. They were just numbered incorrectly. So 1, 3, 2 would be a better way of reading those fragments from the textbook. <coughs> it makes more sense. If you uh, have read already the textbook sections, which you should have, uh, then you would have noticed that um, Machiavelli, you know, the, the, the word Machiavellian, Machiavellian uh, comes from the way he describes the strategies of taking power and holding on to power. Uh, I'm referring, of course, to the famous book The Prince that he wrote, uh, in which he basically tells the prince what to do and what to use in order to get power and hold on to power. And the simple answer to the question, what should the prince do, is anything. It's anything. It's hence Machiavelli. You know, these are the famous passages in which Machiavelli suggests, for example, the prince to, uh, when he has to deal with a city that was not under his rule or not under his family's rule, a foreign city, that uh, one of the best ways to take it over from another prince is to get in there and wipe out the other prince's family, and the other prince and his whole family, and all his followers. Cut them off. Very brutal. Um, and this is why you see the already the similarities perhaps with Thucydides, because you see that anything goes. Anything goes in order to get power. And perhaps you will just sit back and think, well, wait a minute, didn't we say that during our discussion of what is politics, that power is one of the things? Yes, but here's, here's where our discussion of our conversation about what political philosophers are doing, their search for a solution to this question of order and disorder, here's where that discussion actually comes into play. And we have to ask, what is the picture of the world? What is Machiavelli's answer to this question, what is politics, that makes him give such answers? And that's also with Thucydides, or uh, the Athenians, actually, in Thucydides' his million dialogue. What makes them, what allows them to give such answers to the millions, saying, well, actually, this is how the world works, the strong do what they do, and the weak suffer what they have to suffer. The strong do whatever they can, the weak suffer what they have to suffer. Um, so, let's look then at Machiavelli and see why does he propose this. Who is this Machiavelli guy? Well, funny thing is that The Prince, which now is a well-read work of political philosophy more or less, is not a really tremendous political philosopher, but he's a political thinker. Um, so this, this work, The Prince, was actually an application uh, essay, literally. He wrote this thing in order to make the prince, the local prince, the, the, from the Medici family uh, from, uh, in Florence, to, to, to convince him to give him a position in the government. And the irony, the irony of the thing is that the prince never read, the, the, the actual prince, never read the, this application, never read this essay, that the next prince which came maybe read a part of it and gave the job, uh, a job to Machiavelli, but by the time this all happened, Machiavelli actually died. So, 
sent your pirate here, and actually the, the, the work became famous long after his death. But let's look a little bit at his portrait, and then you see Kamenad, and you, see, you have a, perhaps a better answer to the question, why is he writing what he's writing? What sort of a picture of the world, of the world, of you know, what is politics, what is the human being, what is the best life, where does this come from? And what is his answer to the question, to, to the t- tension between order and disorder in the world, right? Because that's, you know, an attempt to, to hold on to power, an attempt to take control of politics is an attempt to create order. But you create order in, in a way in which you think order should look like, right? And that depends on what's your picture of humankind, individual human being, the world. So Machiavelli, as I said, born in, uh, towards the end of the 15th century, middle, of cent- middle end of 15th century, he had a career, just like Thucydides, here is another similarity, in politics before he sat down to write. He actually worked in, diplo- in a diplomacy for the Republic of Florence. Now, and yet another similarity, um, Italy, well there was no such thing as Italy, right? It was a country that didn't exist until 150 years ago. But the Italian peninsula, right, that place was populated, was organized in very um, uh, different city-states. You see here, this looks like the Greek city-states. Indeed, these were city-states that warred with each other continuously, fought with each other. Each of them had a different form of political organization, just like the Greek city-states. Some were republics, right, Republic of Florence. Some were princedoms. Right? Well, Machiavelli wrote two books, actually, I mean, several things, but one of the books deals with republican government, a government that is uh, run by uh, elected people, right? Uh, and uh, the other book, The Prince, that we talk about, is written for princely governments, and these are different forms. So, it's a world of continuous division, fragmentation, variety, and turmoil. Turmoil is the key key issue here. It's a world in turmoil. Just like in the Greek city-states, war was a fact of life. And war, just like in the Greek city-states, was brutal. This is not war t- with drones. This is, you're not sitting somewhere in a bunker, you know, playing Xbox with drones and sending them somewhere. This is hand-to-hand combat of the bloodiest kind. Brutal. Watch Braveheart or something to, 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 to get a feel of this, you know. Uh, so this is one, it's a very brutal war, it's a very brutal, continuous vying for power, there's no stability. So in many ways you see that his attempt to develop a political thought and his advice in many ways reflects the world in which he lives. Just like to see this, right, he lived in a time of war, he was a general. So what he knew was this continuous turmoil and this continuous conflict. Again, I'd like to say this, and uh, I'll stop mentioning them, but you notice the similarities. Machiavelli um, loses his position. Why did he lose his position? Because uh, the Republic fell to the pressure of the family, of the Medici family, or princely family, who came and overturned the Republican government and took over Florence. They were an old foreign uh, family from uh, Florence. So suddenly, you know, a new government, a new regime, the old regime is wiped out. Machiavelli loses his position because obviously he had it by virtue of his connections with, with the old regime. So here's another event, decisive event in Machiavelli's life. And he is basically sent into sort of an internal exile. He's sent into his house, to his farm, where he lives a sort of a middle, lower middle class life. But he also is, uh, you know, attacked in a way. Uh, you know, he's imprisoned, he's tortured, he's beaten because he was part of the old regime. He was a suspicious guy. And in that time, you didn't know who was with you necessarily. Neither do you do now. You didn't know who, who was with you. You don't know who is against you. So he was, you know, a potentially dangerous element. This too works in his picture of the world. So he was fearing for his life in a very concrete way. Now, while he's in exile, I said to say this, I said I didn't, uh, I didn't, I won't mention it again, but uh, as he's in exile, this is when he sits down to write about what he's learned from his previous experience. Right? To, uh, he sits down and he writes, for example, The Prince, again, not as a work of um, political philosophy, but as an application um, uh, essay. So that's, that's, that's the context. You see, you see the background from which uh, a world in, in, in continuous clash and turmoil and um, 
which he has experienced, which he has experienced firsthand working in diplomacy. And uh, then exile and him pondering on this, trying to get back in uh, uh, in a good position and writing advice to the prince. This is why it's called the prince. It's a book of advice to the prince. So what is in this book, the prince? Again, the textbook. Read the textbook. I'm not going to repeat what is said there. But the essence is right that the prince he describes different methods methods of taking over cities, of, of grabbing control of a city and obtaining it. And it's, it's very far from the idea of what is the purpose of the ruler, although, you know, clearly, implicitly, the purpose of the ruler is to have power. And obviously this doesn't really fit with what the definition of the ruler is, right? Uh, it's more like the definition of a bully. That's not the same job description. But, uh, you know, you can go to Plato, that's where the discussion is about this. But <coughs> what comes through from, from the prince is this is that the whole set of suggestions, brutal as they are, that, that Machiavelli proposes, that suggests to the prince, use whatever means, far from being amoral, meaning non moral, they reflect a different sort of morality, which is not morality, right? we would not recognize it as morality, but it is a different sort of a um, um, way of behavior that fits the world the way Machiavelli pictures the world. So Machiavelli has learned that the world functions in a certain way and he acts accordingly. Okay? So he constructs a false, well, or different sort of a morality, way of behavior, ethics. This is why he, he's strong. I mean, he doesn't clarify this because he's not that deep of a political th uh, philosopher or philosopher. But this is what actually will happen. So now let's talk about what is this world that Machiavelli uh, describes. Now, we're still working with Christianity, right? We're still, that's the world view, generally accepted, right? So, you know, God, the world. Now, as we, as we talked about before, the world, we all know that it's disorder because it has crime, violence, all those things that he established. But you also know that it has good because otherwise you don't know what bad is, right? You don't know evil if you don't know what's good. And again, why is this important? Right? How can you advocate, you know, for example, for freedom of the individual if you don't think that is an a good? Right? It means that lack of freedom is, a, is an evil. So, anything you propose, any constitution, the U.S. Constitution is built on a moral philosophy. Right? The Declaration of Independence stating uh, all men, you know, are created equal, created equal and have the, life, the, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness because that's how they were created and that's how it accords with nature. We talked about this in Aquinas. Well, who says who? Right? What the Declaration of Independence describes is that the world functions in a certain way. It is ordered in a certain way so that, you know, we're born in a world in which human beings have a value. Well, says who again? Right? Clearly, there's a philosophical, moral structure behind it. You assume this is how it is. Right? This is what, on what the Constitution is built on. On, set, on a set of assumptions. It's not neutral. It says that there's, there, there is a way in which human beings should live. Based on what, again? Right? It, there is an implicit moral diagram. So, in any, it's the same in any political structure, in any political philosophy, in any political program. Even if they don't say it, even if the authors don't realize it, which is the most dangerous thing, there is always an assumption about the world, about human beings, and about the role and meaning of society and politics. So the, the world is disordered, but you also know there is an order, right? Now, uh, one thing that you will see in Machiavelli is that this is why he is um, also considered one of the modern thinkers, because in modernity this will happen, is that he simply neglects this part. Remember the separation between our world, this time, time, and the transcendent God, right? Which in the Greeks you didn't have it, right? In the Greeks it was all gods, humans, all in one whole. There is a mental separation between, between what, what is the absolute good, the God, and everything else, 
everything else, material, non-material, spiritual, mental, that is not God, that is created by God. So this thing is separated into everything and God in Christianity, in uh, in in Judeo. So this is the framework, right? The very word secular, right, uh, as I mentioned, comes from from this idea. It says that seculum, the word, means of our time, of this age, right? And that's what means that that's this, right? But it, we know that there is this time because we know that there is something called not this time. We talked about the fact that we, this is why we also have the idea of history as a, something with a direction, because we talk about origin and end. If everything is one, then there is no beginning and end. But it's all only repetition. The same thing happens. Time is in circles. But I'm not going to go back on to that. Um, so, this is the world in which my favorite uh, lives. He completely ignores this, the transcendent. Right? So this is the world. And the, what is the world that he lives in? Right? I just described it. Continuous conflict, warfare, suffering, right? He's in fear of his life. This is the picture in which in which, which he projects and underlies his political advice. This is why in, in, uh, in uh, Machiavelli, and again you should read the textbook for the details, but I want to go to the essence, in Machiavelli you have two very important um, concepts. One is virtu, and the other one is fortuna, which is not fortune and it's not virtue. Not the same thing. It's in Italian. Virtu and Fortuna. So what are these? But Fortuna is basically his description of, of the disorder that characterizes the world. Meaning all these life is tough. <laughs> life is tough and things come at you but all mostly adversarially. Things are adversarial. Things want you to die. Right? That's what life is. And this, this applies to other human beings, society, the world. His picture of the world is a, is a, is a, is a place of continued struggle, conflict, but that is directed against the, the, the person, the individual, the, the whatever. It's a, it's a very dangerous adversarial world. And again, now think of the actual political world in which you live, that insecurity, and it gives you a sense of why he looked at the world that way. Now, that is Fortuna, because, right, Fortuna, it, it, you know, here sounds like Fortune, but it's not, but it has a connection. The, the connection is that it is uncontrollable. It is the fact, it's, this, it's a name for this uncontrollable, these uncontrollable forces of, of life, which again includes other human beings and society and whatever, <coughs> which are random, right? So what is then the task of the individual? The task of the individual is to survive. So uh, at the essence, in the essence, his political thought is a political thought of survival. You know, the prince taking power, basically what he's trying to do is to control Fortuna. This is why, you know, he can use any means possible. Because this is the clash. The clash is between Fortuna and the individual. And, and Machiavelli says that, well, can you actually control Fortuna? No, never. No, never. He uses some very interesting images for Fortuna. And again, these are his words, not mine. Um, he, con he compares the Fortuna, right, this, this force of, of disorder, disorder that, that dominates the world, to one of those raging rivers, which when in flood overflows the plains, sweeping away trees and buildings, bearing away the soil from place to place, everything flies before it, all yields to its violence without being able in any way to withstand it. And yet, though its nature be such, it does not follow therefore that man, when the weather becomes fair, shall not make provisions both with defenses and barriers and build canals and so on and so on. So, Fortuna is like a raging river out of its bounds, wiping everything away. Clearly you can defend. But he says, there are moments before or after when the weather is calmer where you can either prepare, be better prepare, or then learn from what just happened and build. So Fortuna is more powerful than the human being. You are at the mercy of the, of the 
tempest, you are at the mercy of the elements. However, you can do something, and that something is subsumed into in this in this concept of virtu. So virtu, and it, it does sound like virtue because in a way it is the virtue, it is the best life uh, that uh, that well best life possible that um, Machiavelli suggests to the prince, for example. What is the virtue, right? Remember that in Aristotle, Aristotle virtue was you know becoming what you. Some what you know the na- becoming what your nature naturally right directs you to be right in the sense of your human being you have to be a full human being rational mm-hmm. not not driven by instincts and so on so what was virtue virtue was the seed becoming a popular yeah? this the principle of teleology actually being accomplished now what is virtue in a way right what is this virtue is, well, what are the conditions here? The conditions are Fortuna, this raging river. Virtu, or the, we can, we shouldn't translate it as virtue, but for a second, let me think, let me argue and present it in that way. The virtue of the person is the sum of all those things that he has, from cunning to intelligence to, to uh, uh, the fact that he doesn't have scruples to to uh, experience, to, to, to education, all the things that the individual has in the, the prince has it in his luggage, right? That allows him to what? Survive Fortuna. Beat Fortuna. Well, not defeat, but be, beat, beat it in the sense of managing it, in the sense of channeling that wild, uh, raging uh, river. Let me give another uh, 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 quote from Machiavelli, again, not me. For my part, I consider that it is better to be adventurous than cautious, because fortune is a woman, not fortune, fortuna. And if you wish to keep her under, it is necessary to beat and ill-use her. That's Machiavelli. And it is seen that she allows herself to be mastered by the adventurous, rather than by those who go to work more coldly. She is therefore always woman like a lover of young men, because they are less cautious, more violent, and with more audacity, with more audacity to command her. So, Machiavelli paints this picture of women as irrational. Again, this is Machiavelli, right? And how do you control that with, with violence? Again, Machiavelli, right? Not me. Um, but that's these are images he uses to depict, right? To depict this. Uh, this world, and so here too is the sum of all those capacities that, that the prince needs to have to in order uh, to survive. This is why, this is why, as I said, he creates a morality, quote unquote, which is according to this worldview. What becomes moral, right? To kill in the traditionally was not good, you know? To help was good, right? Well, is in this world that uh, this was a, this is the Christian morality the, uh, in which he's surrounded at least in theory, right? He doesn't see, it, you know, accomplished. Uh, so, what is killing bad or good in this world is helping good or bad in this world. Well, depends on what. What is the goal? Right? What is the what is the principle underlying living in this world? What is how do you judge these actions? Well, in this framework, what is the good action? The good action is the one that defeats Fortuna and allows for the individual to survive, to win. Power. This is what power is. Power is not nobody seeks for power for the sake of power. That's absurd. Right? Clearly, power, because that power is a relationship, as I mentioned in my comments in, your, in the discussion. Power is a relationship. Right? People use power because they want satisfaction. For example, they want money. They want satisfaction. And money, they want money for the sake of money. They want money for the sake of security. For the sake of satisfaction. For the sake... And this is a key thing.